Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is an absolute stud. A man who covers college football for ESPN. He's obviously been a college football coach for like 30 plus years. He was formerly at Florida. We're lucky he's at ESPN. Coach Dan Waller. Yay! Hey! Hey! Great to be with you guys today. Hey, thank you for coming back on, brother. Uh, We appreciate the hell out of you. And I want to let you know, watching you, Matt Barry, Boog, and the team operate is one of my favorite things to do throughout the entire football season. I spend a lot of time with you guys. So thank you for your work and your uh, wisdom. We have a lot of fun up there. You know, I mean, you get that that fun deal, though, on a Saturday. I get to watch you guys in the morning, right? And we're in studio getting ready to to get on set as you guys are checking out. You get to go enjoy the rest of the day of college football. We finished taping that – me, Joey uh, Galloway, and and Matt finished taping that college football final about 2 a.m. Because somehow these West Coast games – become right down to the final play of the game and we're waiting for this final outcome about two in the morning with last week it was BYU seeing if they can make the comeback right the week before was BYU Utah we've got Colorado I I envy you you get to go enjoy the day of college football we're we're sitting there in studio even though we do have an ultimate man cave there not quite like your setup but it's not bad well I would actually be interested in seeing what your guys' look like. <laughs> and also, like, the Fox one, the CBS one, mm-hmm. like, how they watch all the games. I would like to see what the setup is like because watching all those games is not easy. Um, just as somebody that tries to do it every single weekend on Saturday and on Sunday for this particular program. Keeping up with all the storylines, obviously not easy. There's a shit ton going on. But the way the entire ESPN college football crew throughout the day operates, I – uh I love that shit. I, I, I think you guys do a very good job. I think you're fantastic. Now, let's talk about some of it. So, we were yeah. just chit-chatting about the Ohio State-Indiana game. And obviously, with this 12-team playoff, one of the bids is going to go to a Power 5 conference regardless. So, 11 spots up. We should see how they lay out. But this whole strength of schedule, who plays where, you can already hear it coming from a lot of people in the SEC when they're talking about how hard their conference is. You can already hear it coming from some people in the Big Ten whenever they're talking about, like, Indiana and others. It's how do you feel going into this weekend about this Ohio State-Indiana game? And what do you think inevitably becomes of all of it? Well, you know, I, I think there's still a bunch of football to be played. And the, the one thing you see, like last week, the, the rankings came out and there was a complete meltdown in the state of Georgia. Like, oh my, how can we be out? Look at what we've done. Everything going on. So there's going to be some arguments that go on over the next couple of weeks. Um, listen, it, I give a lot of credibility to winning, and so you have to win football games. Indiana's won all of their games. They deserve some of the credit they have now. Now, they did hit a a scheduling jackpot this year, right? They hit the lottery, but you know what? So did Texas. I don't hear everybody complaining. Texas has played one game, right? The schedule early in the season looked tough, but that Michigan win's not that great right now. You know, I mean, that's not not a high-end win. Oklahoma win, that doesn't look that good right now, even though they're marquee names. Heck, Penn State hit the lat- the, the scheduling jackpot. Um, you know, so to sit there and say, hey, Indiana, I know you dominated everybody you've played. You've won every game by 14 points or more all season long. But if you don't beat Ohio State or you don't keep it close, you're definitely out when all the other teams get the benefit of the doubt. So I, I, I think it'll be interesting to see how things shake out. But you know what? After tonight, there's going to be a fan base somewhere that's in, that's going to have a complete meltdown. Uh, but then, you know what? Show up and win on Saturday, and you'll fix your problems like Georgia did last week. I'm in very, like, I appreciate you pointing out the fact that other teams like Texas haven't had, like, this strongest schedule. And obviously, Penn State, they lose to Ohio State, and they come back and do their thing. In Indiana being judged differently. I, I legitimately appreciate you saying that because they are a team that's popped up out of nowhere. Literally. Signetti just signed uh, the biggest deal a college football coach has ever signed in the state of Indiana. I mean, you're talking (laughs) just a massive, massive number for good reason because they sold that stadium out for the first time, I think, like, in however, forever, let's just say. It's become a football campus, a football university, and uh, I think there's going to naturally be some 
people that are a little bit harsher on their football team versus others, which is why football judgment matters so much. How much do you think that is actually getting into account whenever they're making their, their actual rankings and projections? Do you think they're watching these games together? Do you think they're pointing out things like, hey, did you see the offense? The offense lines got great. I mean, they were absolutely manhandling a team that was maybe a little bit bigger than them, like what they could face in the SEC. Like how, how do you think the football judgment actually works with these people that are on the committee? I, I think they try to do it. You know, I mean, they're not all football people that are on that committee either. You know, I mean, you, you guys have played football. You know what it's like. I, listen, the one thing, and I, I'll give teams credit for this, like the, to say that if you go undefeated, I've, I've coached and played a long time. I won a state championship as a player. I've won a right. couple of conference championships, national championships as a coach. Right. Won undefeated once at Utah in 2004. Um, <laughs> but I, I think I think the subliminal, I think they want to go in there and very objectively look at everything and give everybody a chance. But, you know, that in the back of your mind, you're sitting there saying, you know, I mean, let, listen, if, if we're trying to figure out who's going to the NCAA tournament in March – we're going to give Indiana the benefit of the doubt, but you know, this is college football and you know, in the back of their mind, I think there's that little bias right there. I mean, it's real. You That's, just reality. You, That's just reality. That's just reality. coach. <laughs> it, sucks. It, it happens. Yeah. It happens. And you know, you make the argument. I, I look at SMU. SMU's one loss is to BYU who was pretty good. And we found out last week how hard it is to go undefeated. Mm-hmm. If you just, you know, you show up, these are 18 to 20. I know they're getting paid now. I know we think they're professionals, but they're 18 to 22 year old kids, uh, you know, and, and it's hard to keep that focus and go undefeated for an entire season. Uh, and so I, th- I think you get that credit of where you are. I think, la- you know, the, the argument over the last couple of years, there's always been, it's always about team number four in the 14th playoff, right? And it's like there's been this argument of who is for it. There really hasn't been a much of an argument over one, two, and three. I, I look at the SEC right now and say there, there's seven teams. You give South Carolina an outside chance because they're one of the hottest teams in the country. But there's seven teams that have an opportunity to compete for at most four playoff spots. At most. And that means there's three fan bases that are going to be uh, like so mad. this. I, I, you you can so sit there mad. tonight, and old, if Ole Miss is on the outside looking in, and they're saying we beat Georgia by three scores, and we're on the outside now, like how we were on the inside last week, now we're on the outside, or is Tennessee on the out? Who's on the outs? And it's uh, it's going to be you know there's going to be some absolute meltdowns over the next couple weeks on fan bases, which make college football great. Yes, the fan base's passion <laughs> and loyalty and like um, in ness. Now, that now I know. I get, let me ask you guys this one. Go ahead. Okay, if if Indiana loses, oh, they, they got to be out. No, no, no. How let's, much? How much? Let's, let's, what's the score? Yeah, what's, what's the, the score? score? Let's flip it. Let's flip it real quick. Oh, okay. Go Indiana on. wins by fourteen. Ooh, ooh. They're number one team in the country. Suck yeah. it, AJ. Yeah. They're right. number Is one. Is Ohio State out? Are we are we giving Ohio State the boot at that point? No, I think Indiana. Ball. I think Indiana gets number one team in the country. All of a sudden, they drop Oregon yeah. to number two, yeah. and everybody's going to go crazy about that in time. <laughs> I mean, that is. <laughs> which, by the way, Signetti. His halftime speech okay. oh, yeah. against Ohio State. <laughs> against Ohio State with that group that he knows he's going to have to re-recruit another crew. Basically, mm-hmm. they got a lot of vets in there. They got a lot of seniors around there. They got a lot of people that have won a lot of football. Is how he describes it because they definitely have. And it's like, yeah. uh, I think this one's going to be scrappy. But you got Ohio State fans over there, Dan. They're just. I, I see. I'm looking. I'm looking. Yeah. He's like, right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's. Been, it got very quiet when I said Ohio State <laughs> could be out of state. The whole question is. It, it's like an assumption. Ohio State's already won the game. It's just by a matter of how much. That is crazy. What if it goes the <laughs> other way? We're bashing in Indiana. Said, boy, that, they haven't played anybody. They really shouldn't be in. They don't deserve this ranking. Well, if they come in and beat Ohio State at home, Uh-oh. should Ohio State be the door? And you know, like don't, don't you know, don't let the hit the door oh, on the way out. Ball of the college say, football out. I love it. Get them out. Win. Penn State, right? Penn State, Ohio State's best win. Penn State, massive win. Close for, loss to Oregon. Yep, kept yeah. it close with Oregon. Came down a little. Yeah, but Ohio State's great win is Penn State, who we said have yeah. not beaten anybody. Like we're in the end, like it's so fun to make all these arguments in college football, and that it's and that's why tonight's it, show is so awesome. Tonight's show. <laughs> Greg McElroy and Joey Galloway will battle. They, they will yes. do, and Booger will do battle with them. Yeah, and then you know Reese will have his 
entire angle from the college football playoff committee, pretty much. I think this show is much better than anybody. I enjoy Greg McElroy gets so pissed. So pissed. <laughs> he gets so <laughs> mad up there. And I think it's how a lot of people feel. Now, he goes to bat, I think, for Indiana because of a lot of what you just said there. Like, it's not their fault that this is their schedule. And he got 12 teams yeah. in there in the Big Ten, which is supposed to be mm-hmm. one of the power of the power four. And now all of a sudden, everybody's like hoping and waiting on them to fall off, which is why it is beautiful to your point. Go ahead, AJ. Coach, when you're thinking of, of you know coaching in this playoff system right now with what's going on, I guess how much would it affect your play coin in your scheme when you know like hey I need to I need to win. This needs to look good. We need to mm. don't have to blow everybody out, but there's certain games when you need to look a certain way. Does that affect coaches play coin and how they may prepare their teams, you think? I, I think I think you know what it can affect you is is maybe in the fourth quarter if the game's in hand at this point, right? You know, I mean you're sitting there and you're saying, hey, the, the game's in hand. It's been decided. I mean, I don't know if it's affecting you through the first three quarters. You're just trying to win a game. It's hard to win. And you're doing whatever you can to win a game. Now, there's not all – every eyeball's on every game, and the perception matters a little bit. So I think you're up there. You're saying, hey, okay. Hey, we're up 10. I know we were – you know, I mean, I don't, don't want to jump all over Vegas and all that, but, hey, we were favored by 16. We're up 10. With three minutes to go, I I might take a shot right here. <laughs> I might just so you know, like let, let's say let, let's let's make sure we 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 hit that score so that we look better mm-hmm. in everyone's eyes at the end of the game. It wasn't yeah. Because if I'm betting game. on you and you cover never, I hate you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Underperforming, oh, mm-hmm. under like public perception. Hey, you know this. Listen, as a coach, to say coaches don't look at that stuff, they're coaches. Trust me, coaches look at this spread because here's what happened. One, you want to look at it early in the week to see if something's you're missing. If like you're all of a sudden you're watching the film and you're like, Hey, I feel pretty good, but we're like a ten point underdog. You're like, Oh, hold on, I better go watch something. Those guys know what they're talking about. <laughs> or if you're like a big favorite, you're like, ah, I, I, am I missing something on film? You know, the other one is it, it's amazing, right? If 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 you're a coach and your team you cover, you're a big underdog, but you cover. You know what the fan base is saying? Man, that coach, he's got those guys playing hard. They compete. They're out there tough, right? Hell yeah. If you win and don't cover, like, boy, I'm not sure. You know, I was a good win, but I don't know we're headed in the right direction right now. Yeah, so, I, so <laughs> not the performance we were expecting, right? No. Uh, yeah. not, not what, yeah. Right? I mean, we're undefeated technically. I've lost a lot. I've lost a lot betting on this team. I don't know about you. That's uh, I'm happy to hear the self awareness from an actual coach. Like I'm very, I'm very thankful that uh, you. Now that now that I'm on the TV side, I can actually tell you the truth of what really goes on behind the scenes with the coach. This this, uh, this season has been obviously crazy back and forth. I feel like years past, you kind of knew who that team or who that quarterback leading that team, who who you would bet on to make you, uh, a run throughout the playoffs. Who's the best quarterback right now, in your opinion, uh, as where the season stands right now? I think it's I think it's pretty easy. It's Shador Sanders. I, I, you watch him play the consistency week in and week out uh, of what he's able to do and lead that team. Now, um, you know they're a very talented team, and, and Coach Prime's done an amazing job of turning that around. Uh, they do have probably the first and second pick in the draft, so you would hope they'd win some out there when you have that, that good of players. Uh, but the I, I think watching how he's grown and mature some of the other guys scare me uh i'll ex- you know i'm really excited to see curtis work this week against ohio state uh-huh. because i think he's had a hell of a year but can he in a big game now throw this team on the shoulders and and pick him up and carry him wolverine, you know you watch too. wolverine blood yeah. that guy got surgery on a tuesday was playing on the next wednesday on the yeah, that, that's he, go ahead he's he, He's, a, he's an interesting, right? I mean, because everybody else has their faults. Jalen Milrow, they're finally figuring out, run the ball, man. They, let, let the guy go run the ball, and and he's a dominant player. He can still throw. Don't think you're not. You just But do what you do well. Cam Ward's got to learn to throw the ball on time, right? I mean, you just can't run around all over the place. He's got to get a little bit of rhythm. But I, I think you watch Shador. He can extend plays, make plays. He has tremendous arm strength all over the field. And when it calls for it, he gets the ball out on time and he can play on rhythm and then he can improvise and he's getting a great feel on when to do both. So I, I think it's um I, I mean if I if I was a bet man, he's the guy you want right now to try to yeah. you're gonna go into a game to win a game in college football. 
and I'd be highly shocked if he's not the first pick taken in the draft. He's tough, too. Yeah. Yeah. He's tough, man. Obviously, you talk about the sack stats from last week or last year, and then obviously this year he's taken some as well. That offensive line has gotten a lot better. Their defense has gotten a lot better. Go ahead. You better get ready, right? Because chances are, if you're the first pick in the draft, you're going to a crappy team, so you're going to get hit a lot again next year. So at but, least he's used to get. But not everybody's tough, Coach. Not yeah. everybody's tough. Yeah. That in Shador is definitely that. I mean, yeah. watch. He almost yeah. takes like pride in like getting mm-hmm. up after getting absolutely slaughtered. They already got some teams lined up for him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. allegedly. Absolutely. Did he tweet "Thank God" this Sunday yeah. after the another "Thank God" it. tweet after another Raiders loss? <laughs> okay, you know, just a trend. <laughs> That is starting to take You got to be tough, too. You Deion's kid, you know, every level since Little League, everybody's coming at your head, you know, yep. because you feel like, hey, you know, you're well off. You got everything you want. Now that you're this rich kid out here. And uh, he's obviously handled that, matured. Like like Dan said, he's mature. He's gotten better uh, as the year's gone on. So on every level, from Jackson State and jumping up to Colorado to a different level of competition. So, yeah, I'm, I'm right on, on the same page with that. Now, the interesting thing about that is by far best quarterback in everybody's eyes, but there's a trophy for best player at the end of the year. Connor has a question for you yeah coach how do you feel about the Heisman race this year obviously the Heisman typically is type one of those things like the NFL MVP where usually it'll go to a quarterback but this year it feels like obviously Travis being the heavy favor right now and Gene T being second it feels like it's not going to be a quarterback year uh for the Heisman do you think Travis is kind of the runaway got to give it to him because of what he's doing this year do you think that uh, any of those guys kind of jump up and steal it from him over these last couple weeks I don't. I, the only one I think is if something, if over the next two weeks something happens where he just falls off the face. I think he's done so much, and by not being a quarterback, I don't see him. He's not going to have a bad game mm-hmm. because even if you take him away at the receiver position, he's over there making plays on defense. If you don't, you know, I mean, so there could be a game where hey, they double him and bracket him every single play, and he has like one or two catches. They don't throw his way. I think you're still looking at the game and saying, well, the team won because everybody on the both sides of the ball was about him. And let's stay away from him on the offensive side of the ball. We're going to double him on on the other side of the ball. <laughs> it, it, and so I think it just shows so much. The only one I think that would have a chance is if Genty came out and just over the next couple of weeks just went off, you know, with like back-to-back 300 yards, six touchdown games, something, just something just ridiculous. That it could get tight, but I think it's I think it's between those two. I, I just and I love it. I love that it's finally it's not whoever who's the quarterback of the number one team in the country. I I hate that. I don't think a, the Heisman Trophy to me is the most outstanding player in college football, not the MVP of the number one team in the country. I, I just. Dylan Gabriel is wondering what the hell's going on though. Yeah. 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 How come? Uh, how come this? Aren't we normally? This is kind of how this goes. Uh, obviously, he's a great teammate. He's not worried. He's going to get an invite to New York. He'll get a nice dinner out of it in the city. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I I mean right, he, right? I mean, you're going to go up there and you get to, like a nice Italian dinner up in the city somewhere. He'll have a nice, nice time. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Get a nice time. Yeah. 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 So you talked about the, the oh. point spread, but do coaches going into games think about, hey, you know, obviously you, you want to win the game, you want to win a national championship, but do you think about your quarterback or your receiver, your running back, whoever may be in that race down the stretch, getting them the ball more, getting them touchdowns, anything like that? Absolutely. I, I think you do. Uh, now, one, you're going to do it to, to make sure they get the ball because chances are if you have a guy that's that good on your team, you want him to be successful uh, and to get his touches. But I do think, you know, I mean, trust me, listen, I, in, in, in every game, it happens. You're sitting there saying, hey, this guy has an opportunity to do something special. I owe it to him to make sure it happens and give him that opportunity to make a play. Uh, you know, I always get shocked and sometimes, you know, I mean, I've had it. I had it happen once in a negative time I the, that – the guy had a chance for a rushing record in a game, and we we're up. So I pulled him. Then the SID came down after the game, and said, "Oh, he was only four yards away." And I'm like, Ooh, "You got to let us know that." I'm I'll throw him in to get him a carry to give him the record for the school record or one of those deals. So um, you have people in your ear that are supposed to tell you that stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I, I mean, you're you're a kick. You're right. I mean, think of a kicker. I mean, yes. a guy that has a chance to sit there and and like, hey, I might I, if, if I have, we have a bunch of field goals he has a chance to set a record I'll, I'll i have a chance at the end of the game we'll roll out the field goal team and try one i mean whatever you're doing for any player on the team you want to give guys the opportunity to really set a standard and, and have pride in, and be rewarded for all the work they've put in whether it's in a single game or over a course of a career 
as the all-time leading scorer for West Virginia University, I appreciate your mindset there. <laughs> and shout out to Coach Stu. Shout out to Coach Stu uh, for everything there as well. Uh, yeah, because you're talking about a player like Genty. You know, yeah. like he's been benched in the second half of some games, yeah. fourth mm-hmm. quarter of some games. And then there, whenever it's just going to be a stats conversation on whether or not he should be able to win over Travis Hunter, it's very fascinating. I love that you were coming from a coach's point of view when you were saying, yeah, the defense is worried about who? Travis Hunter. Offense is worried about who? <laughs> Travis Hunter. Head coach is like, all I did this week was talk about Travis Hunter <laughs> mm-hmm. and how we try to not let him wreck this entire game. Uh, he's a great kid, too, man. He's like... Everything you'd want him to be. Mm-hmm. Everything you'd want that person to be. One of a kind. Anomaly. He's awesome. Hey, Travis, good job, man. Oh, yeah, Way Travis. Way to go, Travis. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. He, well, he's deser- all deserving. Amen. All I, deserving. I agree completely. I uh, And hopefully in the future there's more players that are allowed to kind of play both uh, both ways. Now, let's talk about a conundrum that's certainly taking place in the Southeast. Tone has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, there's, there's a couple things you said during this conversation that kind of piqued my interest. You said you thought the SEC would probably get four teams, which, you know, I mean, Ole Miss beats Georgia, Georgia beats Tennessee, Tennessee beats Bama, Bama beats Georgia, and then you got Texas sitting there. That's five teams right there. What do you do with those two lost teams that all beat each other? And then when you were talking about coaches being honest, Lane came out this week, Lane Kiffin, uh, and he said, you know, there's coaches in the SEC who are hoping they don't make that SEC championship game so they don't end up mm. with a with a third loss situation. How do you think the SEC in a whole and, and what Lane's talking about is gonna is gonna shape out? Well, I think I think it is huge. And I hate that a team I, I think there's a chance teams could be punished for playing in that championship game, which is just wrong. Uh, and I say four teams and, and a lot, I was thinking three. Uh, up until BYU lost, because I thought last week, if BYU is undefeated, they go play Colorado. I think Colorado has a great chance to beat them. How do you take a team that was undefeated, went undefeated through the regular season, loses their conference championship game, word, and knock them all the way out of the playoffs when they were probably number four or five that week going in? So it's it's who's stealing bids from who at this point. You hit, hit the nail on the head. The, the thing is, for, for the SEC right now, is – it's going to be so wide open. And I think that Alabama, the Georgia win over Tennessee last week is going to cause con- some confusion for everybody in the league. Texas, Texas A&M, you imagine both of them take care of business this weekend. Uh, A&M's at Auburn. Texas got Kentucky at home. The If that happens, the winner of that game's in the championship game. Right? The winner's in. Now the loser goes into the pool. But, you know, that – Let's say A and M wins that game. We're going to throw Texas into that pool. There's there's five, ten and two teams, six and two in league that are sitting there and say, okay, which one of us is in? And then you're the other team saying I, it is. It's not bad not being in. I, I think you look at the Big Ten. Let's say Ohio State wins by three this week. Indiana and Penn State are sitting at home, saying, hey, we don't even have to play. We're sitting here, and you guys got us locked into a playoff spot. This is really nice. Um, I think it is going to be really interesting. I think when you look at it, it is it is crazy. And and within the SEC, all of those teams played each other. And that's how they knocked each other off, where it didn't happen in the Big Ten. And the SEC finally gotten to the point where the league, listen, I, I was head coach in that league for 13 years. When Kirby came out last week, said, I challenged somebody, come, come, come show up. <laughs> and the one thing in that league, come show up and see what it's about. You got to bring your A game. And I always say this in the SEC it's not about the one game. Heck, you know, anybody in the country can beat anybody in one game. I, I truly believe that. And, but when you're in that league, it's, it's not the first week, it's not the second week, it's the third week that all of a sudden nobody's practicing. That's what makes it like the NFL. I mean, you're sitting there and you're saying, holy cow, every week I can't believe this team's better than the last team. You know, I mean, listen, LSU, they, they might be, I mean, our team's right now jumping up and down saying, hey, I want to go play LSU. I want to go play Florida. They're kind of like low. Hey, South Carolina, they're a three loss SEC team. Let's roll them on the schedule right now. Uh, you know, those are teams that aren't even going to be in the discussion. I mean, Kentucky, Kentucky even. Yeah, Kentucky. There Kentucky we go. and Arkansas. Kentucky and Arkansas. Are you jumping up and down saying, hey, I want to go play Arkansas right now, like to, to secure my playoff bid? Not, you know, I, I'm sure would Penn State rather, you know, would they like, hey, let's go. I'm gonna, we're going to go finish the season at LSU and Arkansas on our last two games and try to hold on to that one loss 
because they're kind of bottom tier SEC teams. Let's see how that goes. So I've heard obviously a lot of teams and a lot of people around there that have said that, and it's different down in the Southeastern mm-hmm. Conference. But I think we all... You've seen it at game day, haven't you? Yes. I mean, it's a scene. It's different. It is... I mean, it's just different. Like, obviously, Michigan, Ohio State, I think Penn State all have cults that can keep up, yeah. you know? I think they're like the northern representation of it. But, like, in the South, that's everywhere. That, that's like... That's that, every it, school. It's every, it is yeah. everywhere. And it's not just them. It's their parents. It's their parents' parents. It's their parents' parents' parents. So there's just, like, centuries in some places of <laughs> tradition that are happening. The families have I've sat on this part of this ground watching this team for this long and these are it's like it is different down there i I can certainly say that but we can all agree that the big 10 this year and the sec are the two right i I think that's pretty apparent by all so why don't they and they could do this because it's the first year but i guess they don't want to set a precedent and lock themselves into anything in the future but they could easily say whenever the championships are made that if you made it to the championship with the sec and the big 10 you're an automatically (laughs) in You know, they could say that because they want to put an emphasis on championships. That's why they made the top four seeds who get a first round by uh, champions, conference champions, no matter what you're ranked. They want an emphasis on these conference championships. They wanted that. They said they held that dearly. That's why the Power Five champion is an automatic bid. They want people caring about it. Well, then why don't you just take that consideration where people are bummed out about making it to the championship and kind of put that to rest and just say if you make it you're in like that that could be something you earn but i guess the opposite side of that is where does that stop is it always the big 10 in the sec mm-hmm. what if the acc gets really strong yeah. and they build up what if you know the big 12 builds up strong and the big 10 has a down year how do you go about doing it so there's just so much shit yeah. that is always like <laughs> this in college football it's, it's real it's just always something it feels like in college ball. It, it, well, and it goes, and it's always been voted on, and it's always designed. Like, there's a group of, like, like I, I went, and you go in the meeting, and I did the mock draft deal with ESPN or whatever they do with the college football playoff committee. And we went in the meeting. I left. There were still questions I had. I understand some of the criteria they use, but I, I don't always agree with them, you know? And, you know, I mean, he, I, I, it's just hard to do in college football with the current makeup and the current setup of how it is to get it done. I mean, like the NFL, you could sit there and say, hey, you know what? I mean, the, the Bengals, they got Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow. They look really good. Now, I know they haven't won games, but we should put them in the playoffs <laughs> anyway. Right? It doesn't matter. They, like, they're a really good team. I don't care if they win or lose. They, but in college football, like, hey, well, we're going to vote you in anyway. So it doesn't always matter off your record. I mean, it does to a point. But as you guys said, I, I will say this. The Big Ten, here's the, the interesting thing that Big Ten has said. With the exception of Indiana, I think the Big Ten's locked. I think I think Indiana's going to be in no matter what anyway. I, I think they're going to even, unless hey, it's, it's Hell yeah. something embarrassing. Who, 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 or, they lose to, or they lose to Purdue the final week, which whoa. I don't see happening. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, Easy. whoa, 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 coach. Don't, yeah, I'll be just, careful. Just move so, I, I'll be nice. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't even pull in the universe. I didn't have to. Don't even pull in the universe. Don't even need that in the universe. That's not it. That's not happening. Bingo. But you you go and you say, all right, so four Big Ten teams are in. That means there's only spots for four at the most, maybe three, depending on how other things shake out, of SEC teams. Well, as you said, I mean, there's going to be a bunch of irate fan bases that will call for a complete injustice of the college football system when their team gets left out because they're going to have an argument. Hey, but we beat this team. We beat them head-to-head. We should be ahead of them. And that's what's going to be really interesting to see how the committee is ranking these head when they have the two teams. How do you rank Georgia ahead of Ole Miss when Ole Miss beat them by three scores? You can sit there and say, but Georgia has two other really quality wins. uh, And their losses look a little bit better. Ole Miss, you don't have great loss. Like, I don't – that argument's going to be pretty, pretty, pretty incredible coming through. And then Tennessee's going to say, "Hey, we beat Alabama. You know, I know we lost to Georgia, but we beat Alabama. So shouldn't we be ahead of them? Like, how do you get ahead of somebody? It's going to be pretty crazy. It's going to be. It's like the whole thing is just going to be is going to be insane. And I, I think you're right. It's going to be four Big Ten teams who, who get in. I, I, I don't think. Like IU's going to have to lose by forty. I think for them to, and, or or they're going to be so mad. But then. I tell you what, Coach. Like, if if a fifth SEC team gets in, 
the internet is going to burn it down because it's going to be the ESPN SEC <laughs> bias and all yep. of ESPN decided who was going to get in. I, I tell you, it's going to be worse. It's going to be worse if a fifth SEC team gets in versus a fifth SEC team not getting in. Yep. Yeah, the SEC SBN chat is loud. Mm-hmm. Yep. I assume you hear it now that you're on TV and obviously from the SEC and all this whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, it, it's, it's, it will be wild. I, hey, you know what? There's a big one I'm, I'm excited for this weekend. The, the, uh, uh, see if the four horsemen show up at Yankee Stadium again uh-huh. for, for Notre Dame Army. Have you seen? You know, can, have you seen the uniforms right this yeah. weekend? So sweet. The uniforms. I haven't for seen Army. them yet. Oh, sweet, sweet uniforms for Army this weekend. But go ahead. I mean, is Bryson Daly one of the toughest guys you've seen? The quarterback in Army. I mean, can he put that team on his shoulder and find a way, you know, to to beat Notre Dame in Yankee Stadium? That'd be unbelievable. Yeah, I hope so. I well, then, then that would that would that would clean that would wipe Notre <clears throat> Dame out of the playoff yes. discussion, yeah. I guess, which would. Yeah, well, them being a part of the college football playoff discussion since the beginning because they can only get fifth because they're an independent is just a whole other added wrinkle to it. Tonight, what's the biggest surprise coming, you think? What's the big move of tonight's rankings that we should expect on Tuesday? Or is it going to be status quo from last week? Um, No, I, I think the uh, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think BYU might hang on staying in the top, and I think – Tennessee's the team that's going to be their fan base, you know, on old Rocky Top's going to go ballistic. I think they're going to be the big drop team to go uh, to be the team that that's out of the SEC tonight. Uh, right. That would be my guess. I think they're the ones that are out. I'm excited to hear the reaction, just like there is every single Tuesday. Can't wait to watch the boys do their thing tonight. And uh, thank you for the great season that you've had for college football. And uh, excited to finish it alongside you as I'm at home and you're still working. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Dan Mullen, we appreciate yeah. you.